Happy New Year Hornby fans, and a new year can mean only one thing, a new range. That's right, the Hornby 2024 range has been released. You can view the whole range right now at hornby.com. You can open it up in another tab while you're listening here. But this year, I'm going to be taking you through all the new releases. And I'm also joined by Carl, Head of Development, as he talks about one of our headline models. So we've got lots to get through, so we better get started. I'm Mike, we're Hornby, and this is Hornby 2024 Range Revealed. Hello and Happy New Year, and a big welcome to the Hornby 2024 Range Launch. I'm Martin Weaver, the Head of Brand for Hornby. 2024 is going to be a year where we continue to catch up with the models that we have previously announced we're yet to release. Um, but in addition to that, we have a whole host of new items coming. This year, things are going to be done slightly differently. So whilst we have our normal January 2024 range launch supported by the catalogue, we'll also have a few surprise announcements throughout the year. So I recommend that you stay tuned to what they are. Sadly, I can't tell you about all of those today, but one thing I can tell you is that we will not be talking about TT today. We're going to be waiting and we're going to be announcing new items in TT in early April, so stay tuned. So I hope you enjoy our 2024 range launch, starting with train sets. This year we have one set being added to the range in the form of the Trying Railways R2X analogue train set. Our Trying Railways Remembered set brings the R2X set back to life with a Class 3F Ginty number 47606, an LMS First Class Coach with running number 7573, an LMS Third Class Coach with the running number 27424, as well as a First Radius Starter Oval, Power Clip and Uncoupling Ramp. This set is due for release in spring and is limited to just 1000, making it even more special. With the beautifully presented Trying Remembered 2X set, you can relive those imaginative days once more. On to our main range now, and we start with a very special collection of models. In 2024, Hornby proudly celebrates its 70 years here at the headquarters in Margate, UK. That's right, we celebrate our 70 years legacy, which started way, way back in the 1950s. As part of this range, we have the BR060 Ginty Rovex Scale Models Limited. The 040 number 6 Connie, the 040 number 7 Nelly, the 040 number 9 Polly, and the 04025550. These are all limited edition and only 750 models will be produced. We also have our 7 Plank Wagon, limited to only 2,000 models. And joining our accessories range, we have Hornby's Office Building, limited to 1,000 models, and Hornby's Factory, limited to just 1,000 models only. All of these models commemorate the 70 years of history for our offices here in Margate. Every year we have locomotives adorning the cover of our Hornby catalogue and this year's cover star is Locomotion Number 1. Fantastic example of early railway engineering, that's why we chose this Locomotion Number 1 as our cover star. In 1825, Locomotion No. 1 became the first steam-hauled passenger train on a public railway, a product of British ingenuity by Robert Stevenson and Company. The locomotive made its historic debut on the 27th of September 1825 for the opening of the first public railway, the S and DR. The locomotive was driven by George Stevenson and it hauled 11 wagons of coal, the carriage experiment and 20 wagons carrying passengers. In a world first, 300 passengers were catered for in the wagons while an estimated 600 to 700 were squeezed into the wagons and some even clung to the sides. Locomotion No. 1 continued service until 1841 when it was preserved, ultimately residing at the Locomotion Museum in Shildon, where it remains today. The move to Shildon, though, caused major controversy as it was the first time in 100 years that it had left Darlington. The Hornby model is based on the version which can be seen preserved today at Shildon, so it does not have parts dating back from 1825. The current boiler barrel is from 1827, some details to point out in the CAD are the 1883 incorporated bell, the chimney, cold detail in the tender and nameplate which does not state locomotion currently. However there is lots more development on this model to come, but as we can already see from the CAD data, the team are working hard to bring this model to life for you to add to your layouts. Along with this fantastic example of early engineering, we are adding many more steam locomotives to our range this year. The L and MR No. 58 Tiger, the Class A1060T number 10 Terrier, which is a web exclusive, 
BR Thompson Class L1 264T E9011. BR Thompson Class L1 264T 67735. We also have a new Class 9F 210 92203 Black Prince. This year we have two new additions to the Beatles collection. You'll remember last year we announced our Liverpool Connection EP Collection train pack, including artwork from Side A, while this year we release Side B. The pack includes the Beatles 040T locomotive and three wagons adorned with artwork from All My Loving, A Hard Day's Night and The Beatles Number no. One. In addition to this train pack, we're also adding an 060 locomotive in the same style as our EP Collection train pack. Both the train pack and model are limited to just 1,000, so if you're a Beatles fan, and who isn't, make sure you snap these up quick. Moving back to our traditional steam locomotives now, we have some more additions in this year's range. We have a GWR 6000 King Class 460-6029 King Stephen. We have a BR 6000 King Class 460-6009 King Charles II. Early BR Class B1460-61306 Mayflower. BR Princess Coronation Class 462-46243, City of Lancaster. Early BR Britannia Class 462-70001, Lord Herkham. LNER W1 Class Hush Hush Streamline 464-10000. LNER P2 Class 282-2002, Earl Martial, with steam generator and extra smoke deflectors. Rounding off our steam selection for this year, we're adding another locomotive to our growing Hornby 00 range. A BR A4 Class 462 Silver King, running number 60016. DCC ready with 8 pin connection, and as with all our Hornby 00 models, Silver King features a die cast body, just as its original counterparts would have been. This is coupled with enchanted decoration, which when paired with a die cast of the boiler, provides a realistic finish to the body. This is a real collector's piece, showcasing the fantastic history of Hornby 00 and this long servicing A4 locomotive. Of course it's not all about steam and we know many of you out there are diesel and electric lovers and we have some great models for you this year. First up we have the GB Rail Freight Class 66 Coco 66734 Platinum Jubilee. We know the Jubilee was in 2022, but that doesn't take away from how great this livery looks. Not only did this loco commemorate a historic moment in history, but with its striking livery, it will stand out on anyone's layout. Other new releases include the DB Cargo Class 67 Bobo 67007 Queen's Jubilee. GB Rail Freight Class 66 Coco 66705 Golden Jubilee. DB Class 66 Coco 66012. GB Rail Freight's Class 66 Coco 66754 Northampton Saints. GB Rail Freight's Class 67 Bobo 67027. FGW Class 153 Bobo 153361. GNER Class 43 HST Bobo Train Pack. For fans of our 060s, we have the BR Class 08 060 08570. BR Class 09 060 D4100. Dick Hardy. Rolling stock is a vital part of setting up any model railway layout. Without it, a locomotive can be left isolated and unable to form a rake of coaches and wagons. Our 2024 range of coaches and wagons spans many eras, from the very early days of rail passenger transport to privatisation, as well as liveries that are fictional but will be beautiful to add to your layout. It seems fitting to start by winding back the clock to those first days of rail passenger transport with our era one and two coaches. LNMR Royal Mail Coach, LNBR number two Queen Adelaide Saloon, LNMR second class coach, LNMR third class coach, LNMR first class coach Sovereign. Four wheel coach four door first class, four wheel coach five door third class, and four wheel coach brake third. Moving forward in time, over 70 years, we have several new Mark III coaches and GNR livery to accompany our GNR Class 43 HST Bobo. We have a Mark III trailer first, running number 41044, a Mark III trailer first disabled, running number 41043, Mark III trailer guard standard, running number 44045, a Mark III trailer restaurant first buffet, running number 40737, Mark III Trailer Standard with running number 42065, a Mark III Trailer Standard with running number 42064, 
Mark III trailer standard with running number 42063. And finally, a Mark III trailer standard with running number 42340. Moving on to our wagons now, and we have several new additions from era 1 through to 11. A BR Laureate Wire Machinery Truck with British Railways Coles Crane. A KFA container wagon with two 20-foot containers and one 20-foot tank tainer. BR Engineering YGB Seacow. Mainline YGB Seacow. EWS YGB Seacow. BR Civil Engineering YGH Sea-Line. BR YGH Sea-Line. Load Hall YGH Sea-Line. LNER Northeast Scottish Area Hopper. BR Trout Ballast Hopper. A BR 27 ton iron ore tipler wagon, Stanton Ironworks 20 ton coke hopper wagon triple pack, a BR 20 ton coke hopper wagon triple pack, Stevenson and Clark 21 ton steel mineral wagon, a BR 21 ton steel mineral wagon, total TTA tank wagon triple pack, Shell TTA tank wagon triple pack, Shell Mex TTA tank wagon triple pack, LNMR coal wagon, and a LNMR flatbed wagon. And rounding off, it wouldn't be a range without our Hornby 2024 wagon and our Hornby Christmas wagon 2024. Before we move on to railroad and accessories, I was lucky enough to sit down with Carl, Head of Development, to talk about our cover star. All right, Carl, thanks so much uh, for, for joining us today for our Signal Box range launch. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How does it feel when, when, a, when a new range is announced for you? I, I've, it's exciting for us because we've been working on it for... 12 months now and uh, glad to get out in the open and see what people say about it really so uh, I, I guess as well because you're so far ahead in development of other things as well yeah it overlaps with <clears throat> things you're planning for in the future yeah and, as we said um you know last year that last you know 2023 was going to be a catch-up year mm. and you know we can get to a point where we're announcing models when they're sort of near to completion and people aren't waiting two years for a model to turn up and, yeah um, so we're getting getting to that stage now. We're getting nearer to that stage. So uh, yes, yeah, so we got obviously we got some new announcements, and um, you know some of those have been you know we've been designing and tooling in the background. People didn't know about it, and yeah. that's a good stage, good point to be at, really. Oh, nice. And obviously, there's a lot of different <clears throat> products that that we've released today, but um, one of the standout products and one of the standout models that is on the front cover. Yes, yeah. and uh, is the locomotion number <laughs> yeah. number one? Why why this model? Just as a you know, obviously we've done the the lion and the tiger and the rocket, and it was the obviously the next logical step. Um, you know, we wanted to sort of carry on that range, and it's, it felt like the right time to look at locomotion and uh, you know do the model. Nice, yeah. and it's clearly a, a very intricate model. Anyway, I mean, obviously. Mm -hmm. The Tiger and Lion and, and Stevens Rocket, they're all yeah. much smaller scale to, um, to other ones in terms of piping and things like that. This one, we've seen from the CAD, yeah. is very intricate. Yeah, it's um, so I've got a prototype of it here. Um, as you can see, it's uh, very fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what we've had to do, you know, with this model is uh, create a molding that it's actually going to get shipped in. So that, that's the base of the right sort of carrier i guess you'd call it um there's another part that goes on top just to, to protect it as it's um as it's being transported and it doesn't turn up in you know lots of bits um but yeah all of this <clears throat> intricate valve gear on the top's gonna all move as, uh, as it should be mm. as it should do so um yeah it's been a, a tricky model to to develop so this is the first test shot <clears throat> no this is this is the prototype so it's right. a free, this is a 3d print but as you can see here, we've um, we've got the first test shots now, um, and we're just working on the sort of first running sample of this, which so, should be done in the next couple of weeks. So. so you're at what stage then? So you're at that stage. Yeah, we're going just to... about to get the engineering sample. Nice. Yeah. yeah, that must be quite exciting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I can't wait to see it, actually. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, hopefully it should all move as uh, we expect it to I mean, yeah we, that's th th this to design all of these mechanics on, on top of it is you know steve the designer he's uh it's been a real headache for him so yeah I can um, imagine and how long has this been in development in this one uh we started this at the end of 22. Right. Yeah, so quite, wow. quite, a, quite a while ago now yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we shows, we, we scanned this. We, we scanned this at locomotion, and we we were actually scanning the uh, the Deltic right at the same time. So that was in the middle of twenty twenty two. So, wow. and looking at the, the, this model and the, the history of, of this particular locomotive, it's obviously you know the early days of, of locomotion railway passenger railway, isn't yeah. it? So it's that that kind of nostalgic feel, um, which goes in line with the rest of the year one yeah. that we've got. Um, but it's had a lot of changes over those years, hasn't it? The, the, the actual locomotive itself. Yeah, so this we, the first release we're going to do of this is as preserved, you yep. know, as, as it is in the Locomotion Museum. But yeah, I mean, this, this locomotive went through, it, it changed in so many ways over its life because this is, this, you know, <clears throat> this was like a development for them. You know, yeah. they were trying, they tried things out and, you know, ended up with two chimneys at one point and then offset firebox and all sorts of little changes. Yeah. So um, at the moment, <clears throat> you know, the, the next, this year's release will be, um, as you see it there. And I was reading about when it first traveled um, and it had something like 600 passengers or something like that. And, it, yeah, it, yeah. and people clinging off the back and things like that. When, oh, when I was in the archive of the, um, the NRM, Mm -hmm. And uh, they showed me a not really nice thing uh, letter that was from a little fourteen-year-old boy. Oh, he, was really? he was writing to his sister, and in this really beautiful mm -hmm. handwriting, and um, he was basically explaining what he saw on this on the day. It, it oh won. wow! And he drew a little picture of the the loco. And, oh really? Yeah, it's really really interesting. Oh things. wow! Yeah. So so obviously we mentioned about the the kind of mechanics. I guess if I ask what the challenges <laughs> with a model like this are. Um, Similar to, to Stevenson's rocket and Lion and things in terms of the size of, of things. Yeah, the, the real challenge, always a challenge with um, the double O scale is the you know the uh, the width of the wheels and then the, the scale of the model. Mm. So you know with the you, you can't be difficult to see, but we've had to slightly cut into the underside of the um, boiler just to just to because the wheels are obviously narrow on a yeah. double O scale. Um, but with this model, it was all about getting what goes on top working and looking right. And mm. we had the conundrum of, do we <clears throat> do we make all this work or just do a representation of it? Um, um, but we thought we'd, you know, take a chance. Yeah, yeah <laughs> why not? That's it. That's what people will expect. Yeah, they? exactly. It's, it's, yeah. That's such a big part of it. it honestly, I, I feel sorry for the uh, uh, the factory that's got to make this because it's like building a Swiss Swiss watch. Really. Yeah, <laughs> it makes it worth it when you when you finally get to see it all. Yeah, working so, as, it, as yeah. it should. Yeah, um, and that's part of the process, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. And we were looking at before, and you've got two two um, two fellas on there as well. Yeah. Um, one I assume is shoveling the coal. Yeah. And then the driver there, which we're saying he sits on the side, which is quite. Quite impressive. Yeah, it's quite a well-known photo of this actually going along a track, um, and and we sort of used the same sort of pose as they were sitting on it at the time. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it, I just think it looks great. You know. and is that a luggage thing on the back? That's that? that's the that's where they keep the water. Oh, uh, okay, right. Tender. So um, we have got space for an X18 decoder in there as well. Oh, okay. Um, so you can run it as a digital locomotive. And it's got lots of different textures on it, because it's got, is it sort of wooden yeah. main part, and then it's got um, metallic parts and things like that. Yeah, so like a, all, all the framing and that's like cast, hmm. uh, well, iron. And then um, you've got the wood effects on the outside. But, I mean, this is going to look great when it's going on the track. Yeah, going yeah. Up and down and things. Obviously, that's a, a, a Amazing model from this year's this year's rain. But yeah. You've also been lucky enough to bring us an, another sample. Yes, of something that people at home will be excited about. So I didn't know this was, was coming along with us. So yeah, no, I just <laughs> I just thought I'd bring, bring it along as it was something we had just recently received. And you've got a flirt. Yeah, and we've got the the first decoration sample of the flirt. Nice. Um, which I mean, as you can see, it's uh, it's getting very near being ready for production. Yeah. Um, so, how long do you think, roughly, from a stage like this, would it, on average, take? So they they will now be, they've got all of our comments back. Mm -hmm. um, they'll now be working on the sort of pre-production sample. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, give it another um, 
two months and we'll be, we'll be going into production. And um, again, although we were talking about locomotion <coughs> having mechanics and, and details that, that are small, um, the details that we've got on, on, on this, there's just as much detail as Yeah, it, but with, it's just a very different type of... With, with this model, we, because it's sort of modern image and you know, there's lots of detail on the roof, mm. um, but you haven't got the the nice things like valve gear on the side and things like that. We thought we'd go to town on the detail where yep. we could. Um, and you can see... Yeah, you know, the, looking at all the piping on the top there. ...parts in, involved in creating something like that. And then the way it joins together as well with the yeah. seamless Yeah, so we've got... It's actually driven by two five-pole motors. Right. Um, one at each end. Um, just to... You know, we was worried about traction and things like that. So and we went, we didn't want to use a really big, you know, really large size motor because obviously, as you can see, when this is all lit up inside, mm -hmm. you, you can see everything. So we wanted to get the motor right down in the chassis as far as we could, as far as we could. So it's all hidden. Yeah. Um, so we decided to have a motor on, on each end. Nice. So what 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 are the full sort of features of, of the flat? So well, uh, hmm. <laughs> so. Well, the nice thing we can do is something where you fit oh, the right. coder in the roof. Oh, nice. And that's held on with magnets. Um, got cab lighting, headlights, night and day. We've got uh, footstep lights. So when the driver's getting in and out, oh, they, nice. they, they light up. <laughs> Interior lighting throughout. Um, we've got space for a uh, speaker in the, in the front and rear. And we've also got space for like a, a bass speaker in the power pack, what they call a power pack, the engine, the engine right. coat, the uh, car. We, we've done this because it's where the sort of the beefier sort of sound, you, you want that. And there's space for a decoder in there as well. So if you want to, you know, run this as just a diesel engine sound and then, you know, the front and rear just playing the, ele the electric motor and mm. the other sounds, um, you, you can do that. Nice. And for our HM7000 system, we will be, um, you know, developing two different sound profiles nice. so people can choose which one they want to use nice <clears throat> brilliant well uh, thanks for for bringing it along we'll yeah. obviously get a few close-up shots on on screen for everyone at home um so my final question obviously we've mentioned no commotion and one showing off that but is there any other sort of standout models from from this coming year that you're looking forward to to, to coming in there's i mean we've got b17 coming in um We've got a, a nice new GNER Class 43. Nice. I'm really looking forward to coming out because that's yeah. probably one of my favourite liveries on a, on a HST. Um, but it's finally we're getting, you know, obviously we've had lots of products from previous years that we've not been able to deliver yet. Mm. And they're going to come through, you know, as, as you know, in terms of new product coming through this year, although new announcements is probably less than previous years. We've actually got more in the range yeah, that's yeah. coming out in, in, in this year. So yeah. um, I think it's going to be a really exciting year. Nice. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Um, we appreciate you being here. And stick around because at the end of um, this range launch video, Carl and Martin will be joining me for a live Q&A. So look forward to that. So thanks again. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you to Carl for sitting down to talk to me and showing us some of those amazing samples. Up next, Railroad. Choosing the perfect locomotive and rolling stock for your layout has never been easier thanks to this ever-expanding range. So what do we have in this year's range? Well, we have the Railroad Plus BR Class 47 Coco, running number D1683. This loco will also be available sound fitted. Railroad GWR Class 1000 County of Merineth Train Pack. Railroad MR Class 4P Compound Train Pack. Railroad LNR Class J83 060T running number 8474. Railroad Sanders Oil Company Limited Bagnall 040DH Florence. Railroad Plus BR Class 47 Coco running number 47522. Railroad Plus GWR Bobo number 34 Parcels Car. Railroad BR Rail Freight 45 ton VDA van. Railroad BR Rail Freight VIX Ferry Fan. Railroad BR Rail Freight Hopper HAA Wagon, running number 354966. I know layout is complete without accessories, and this year we have new accessories to help enhance your layout even further. 
Front and left hand Victorian terrace house garden wall. Front and right hand Victorian terrace house garden wall. Left hand two up two down terrace house. Right hand two up two down terrace house. Derelict farm building and a small water tower. Lots of great models in this year's range. If I had to pick some of my favorites, I'd go with the 9F Black Prince. Not only was the 9Fs from last year amazing, they looked beautiful. But there's something about a sleek black locomotive that I just can't resist, and I know a lot of you will probably disagree with me on that. Secondly, I'd go with the W1 Hush Hush Streamlined. I love the Streamlined Hush Hushes we've done in the past. I think we had the grey one a couple of years ago. Uh, and again, sleek black locomotive, so I'm excited to get my hands on that one. And finally, it has to be Dick Hardy. Now I know we're all mature, we're all adults, but who can't? Who can't enjoy a name like that? So yeah, those are my picks. Let me know what your favorites from this year's new announcements are. Obviously, as Carl said in our interview, not only do we have these announcements, but there are a lot of models coming through this year that were announced last year. So it really is an exciting year for us here at Hornby, an exciting year for us to see you get all these new locomotives on your layouts. Just to reiterate what Martin said at the beginning of the video, TT will have its own announcement in April. So look out on all our social media platforms for exactly when that is. Throughout the year I'll be bringing you content around all of our models, behind the scenes, talking to designers and some of our events. So if there's anything you'd like to see this year please do let me know in the comments. It's not over yet though because we have a live Q&A with myself, Martin and Carl to answer any of your questions about the Hornby 2024 range launch. One thing though you have to be subscribed to answer your question live on the show so make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're watching this afterwards click somewhere on the screen and you'll be able to watch that live as well so thank you for watching this range launch 2024 reveal video i'm mike you've been great and i'll see you at the next stop